everybody. Welcome to this Christmas Ugly Sweater Q&A. If you like ugly sweaters, give this video a big thumbs up. And if you don't, give it a thumbs up anyways. Okay. Um, so we asked you guys to submit some questions on Instagram. If you're not following us on Instagram, Coffee and Bible Time, that's where you should look us up. So, let's look at the questions. Questions? That was a weird way to say that. How do you date someone that is not a Christian? Start it out. <laughs> How do you? Um, maybe we should change your question to why you shouldn't date somebody that's not Christian if you are a Christian. That being, going right back to scripture, shouldn't be unequally yoked. If you're a believer, then a non-believer is going to drag you down. The chair analogy, if you're standing up on the chair, it's a lot easier for the person on the ground to pull you down than for you to pick them up. Mm. Mm-hmm. I really like that analogy. That's just the simple way, and it might seem like there's not a lot of Christian guys out there. Uh, I can say that because <clears throat> I have yet to uh, find a Christian lover. But uh, there are, they're out there. Oh, they are, they so are. Yep. Where do the good boys go to hide away, hide away? Oh. That was the low point of this video. Tell where the good boys go. <laughs> <laughs> what? I can't sing. You were good sing. If you go down the rabbit trail of how do you date someone that's a non-Christian, yes, you could do the flirt to convert method. But the thing is, is that you're really setting yourself up for heartbreak. Mm -hmm. You really are. Especially because if your faith is really important to you, then any, then growing really close to somebody like that is going to really conflict your spirit. I God think. says above all else, guard your heart. So, yeah. so are that you puppy. guarding your heart if you're dating a non-believer? Okay, next question. I'm going to find one. How old are you guys, and are either of you in school? If so, what are you studying? Which is actually kind of cool, because recently me and Taylor both have made a decision to go to college. Woo! That's what she, we should title it. Going to college? Question mark. Anywho, I am 20 years old and just now got uh, uh, ooh, just now deciding to go to college. As you can see, I'm behind in my years. Basically, she took a gap three years, two and a half, two and a half, because she's going to college midway this year. And by the time she goes to college, she will be 21. No, I'll be 20, but you'll be turning 21 like in a hot second. A few months. But um, I'm going to a Bible college, Moody Bible. If any of you guys will go to Moody Bible, comment down below and I want to meet you there. I wonder if anyone has Chicago, to. not Spokane. Yeah, Chicago. Um, but I'm gonna be doing biblical studies. Woo! Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, girl, uh, go ahead. I am 18. I took a gap semester. Changing it up on everybody. Uh yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I took a gap semester. Now I'm going to our local community college, taking some gen ed classes for three semesters, and then hopefully, Lord willing, going into a medical sonography program so I can do ultrasounds on people's stomachs. Okay. Great way to do missions work. That's my goal in life, to use my skills to glorify God. Will I be able to ultrasound other things? Of course, I can ultrasound your spleen, your liver, your coronary arteries. <clears throat> what do you like most about Christmas? Oh, the ugly sweaters. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. That's my least favorite. What do I like the most about Christmas? I like it all, honestly. There's probably not one thing I don't like. I really like Christmas. I think my favorite part about Christmas is the combination of snow with Christmas lights at night. Like outside, the Christmas that. lights in the city, if you've ever been to the city. 
with the snow, the glow. Okay, another question. <laughs> What's your favorite TV shows? Mm. I've been loving the Hallmark Channel, the Christmas movies. Oh, bro. And I also like Counting On. So, okay. Those are my top two. Um. You like This Is Us. Mm. Am I watching This Is Us? Yes, I'm on episode five. It is extremely emotional, and it, every time I watch it, I'm, I say this is my last episode because it's too <laughs> much for me. Um, My favorite show of all time? I don't know. Current show that I like, counting on. Fair. Past favorite show? Parks and Rec. Oh my gosh, we get so many of these questions. How have you overcome your problem with food and eating? What helped you? <laughs> Woo! So, if you guys didn't know, me and Taylor have struggled with eating and with binge eating before and we're really not afraid to tell people that because everybody has their struggles and our brother struggles with it, our mom had it growing up, my dad struggles with it, so it pretty much runs in the fam. But we haven't overcome it. I feel like we might have it till the day we die or God could take it away in a second. Either one. But how we, how I have dealt with it is kind of just help, I want to use it as a tool that will help push me closer to God which I know there's a lot of times where I get really discouraged or I give up or I'm believing lies and I just have to every day realign my heart with God and just say, God help me, help me to use this to grow closer to you. And it's, it's a struggle. It's not, it's nothing I've overcome. So I can't give advice on how I've overcome. Um, but I can say that it has drawn me closer to God and I'm really thankful for that. What about you? Um, I would also say that it, sorry if you can hear it talk. Come on in, sugar plum. Wow, don't even make a debut at the camera. Oh, you smell. <laughs> look at her in the, look at her in the screen right now, she's like, plop. <laughs> I would say for me, I also have not overcome the struggle of food and I like to think that I don't get discouraged by it because I know that like, like Paul, it's the thorn in my flesh and it has brought me closer to God. It's helped me realize that I'm not a perfect human being and I need his help and I need to lean on him oh, yeah. and also seek help from other people because this was a struggle that I could not do on my own and so seeing help from other people seeing counselors talking to friends about it um, a lot more people have food struggles than you think it's just a very shameful it feels like it's a very shameful thing so not a lot of people like to talk about it but you'd be surprised at how many people are struggling God is our great counselor oh yeah totally. so I think that just proves that seeking help is not a bad thing because God, we need to seek help from God every day. And God gives us people like counselors to help us, so. Yeah, and if you're struggling with food, just know you're not alone. Um, anyways, if you're struggling with this, you are not alone. And I just wanna encourage you and we say love you. that God loves you, you are his child, and um, his blood covers you, so. And in Christ there is freedom. Food is always going to promise. P food is always going to over promise. So you're going to want to eat it. And then it's going to be like afterwards. You're like what? Like that wasn't even as good as I thought it was going to be. So how to get prepared to be a great godly wife. If you're like 18 or 19 years old. Oh yeah. We just came out with a video on, Did is it okay to want a dating relationship? So I would recommend you you watch that video. Uh, 
getting prepared for a godly relationship. Wowie, kazowie, uh, ee. Here's what I like to tell people. <clears throat> if you have a sibling, uh, you are already ahead of the game because you have to live with them. You're, uh, oh, I don't want that. You siblings, it's kind of like when you're in the honeymoon phase of your marriage, everything seems great. And then you get out of the honeymoon phase after the first couple of years or a couple months, depending on um, the relationship. And it becomes more like, I want to say a sibling relationship, a lot of sharing, a lot of sacrificing, a lot of putting up with the other person's sinful nature and forgiveness, 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 and more forgiveness. So if you have a sibling, you're already ahead of the game. But then also, Ashley and I have both been reading relationship books. Be you have? I told you. What book? I'm reading. Oh, well, we might as well tell them. <laughs> um, my, I, my, beep, beep. I have Audible. Not sponsored for once. The one YouTube video not sponsored by Audible. Hi. Um. <clears throat> I have cleared my throat about 17 times in this video. When God Writes Your Love Story by Leslie Ludy and Eric Is it Ludy. good? That's okay. When God Writes You Love... Okay, so I am I have already read. I read it in one week and I never finished books, aka. So this was a great book. You always finish books. Not even. So, I read the best relationship book of my life. It was so good and I've been recommending it to every person I talk to. Who's my age? So what is it? It's called The Sacred Search. The Sacred Search. It's by a pastor who wrote it. I can't remember his name, but I'll have a link down below. And a holy guacamole. What's the book you're reading right now? I'm not reading one right now. I bet you are reading one right oh, now. Oh, it's an Enneagram book. I read it one night and I didn't want to read the rest. I do that with books. <laughs> I read like two pages of like, That's no. relatable. Okay. But bye guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry, Ariane, there's were all over the place um real life real life can we please leave it unedited i don't want to edit there's a lot of <laughs> crazy, crazy stuff okay well if this is <laughs> unedited <laughs> i can make my face look really ugly bye yeah